so um, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Gerald Spaeth, who's head of the uh, Laboratory of Molecular Parasitology and Signaling Unit, also at the Institut Pasteur. And um, his topic is cross-disease translation. Can we kind of piggyback what we know in one organism into another. So an obvious area of immense interest to uh, DNDI are Leishmaniasis, Chagas disease, and uh, African sleeping sickness, be because they're all kinetoplastids. They're all the same uh, taxonomic uh, order. Um, their genomes have been sequenced, as Diane has mentioned, and revealed a number of common and unique features that might be new start points uh, for drug discovery for new treatments. So question number one is, um, should we be focusing on these common features? And if so, where to start? And if not, why not? OK, thank you. Well, of course, uh, as has been pointed out yesterday already, uh, the uh, tri-trips are quite early branching eukaryotes, and as such, of course, they're extremely different in terms of biology to uh, our eukaryotic cells, which, of course, uh, gives ample uh, attack uh, for drug development. And I just mentioned a couple of, uh, of examples. For example, um, their dependence on very unique regulatory mechanisms. They don't have transcription factors, promoters, and enhancers, for example. So we try now to elucidate how they actually regulate the genetic material. Once we understand that, we actually would have something that could be uh, cross-species uh, acting on these juvenosomatids. Another feature, of course, which is, has been raised yesterday several times, is that they have this gigantic mitochondrion, uh, the kinetoplast, uh, mitochondrion A, which is essential for the parasite. Uh, targeting this structure, of course, uh, has been identified as, as a drug target, and there are phenotypic screenings that have been performed on that. And I could go on and on and on, uh, but the question that arises here is, of course, should this be our guiding principle in drug development to actually focus on these common features and the guiding principle means do we have to actually establish a go-no-go -no -go strategy where we say if this is not applicable to all three, we're not interested in it, you know. Mm. Uh, which I, and I think everybody here would agree, it's great to have a drug that acts against every kind of trypanosomatid, but it should most, most likely not be our guiding principle to make uh, no-go decisions based on that because otherwise I think uh, something like miltefosin would never have <laughs> reached you know, the market. Uh, so this is yeah. very important. And then uh, the other question is, of course, there are many, many other challenges. So there are these opportunities to exploit the parasite-specific biology. But the challenge here is, even if it's working against these parasites in culture or, you know, uh, how will this actually work uh, in the real context? Because these parasites have different tropisms. Some are extracellular, like Brucey, Jerusalem uh, Brucey, some are intracellular. Then the intracellular ones, like uh, Crucey and Leishmania, one sits in the phagolysosome, the other one sits in the cytoplasm. Then even looking into Leishmania, one is visceral, one is mucocutaneous, the other one is cutaneous. So it's extremely challenging to think about something uh, It's like a strategy to actually cover all of these things. Yes, so even within the genus Leishmania, you have about 17 different uh, species of Leishmaniasis. Do you think it's feasible to come up with a, a drug that will go to the mucocutaneous region, cutaneous and visceral, or do you think well, that's another right. optimistic um, goal? This goes about? back to the last argument that I just mm. raised, because, of course, uh, they have uh, very different tropisms and um, I believe that it's going to be quite challenging, of course, in terms of pharmacokinetics and how these drugs are actually metabolized and everything uh, in different organs in the liver. Certainly, this is, must happen very, very different compared to the skin. Uh, so I believe that uh, we would be extremely lucky if we find something that works across, uh, across the board. And uh, maybe the better idea is uh, uh, to piggyback on, on, on uh, organisms where drugs exist and these other organisms have actually similarities to Leishmania and Trypanosoma. For example, this is the third question you wanted to ask, I, I, I know. Yes, <laughs> I is. anticipate this question. <laughs> um, so for example, of course, antifungals are an extremely important source for anti-Trypanosomatid uh, uh, drug uh, candidates. Amphotericin B and, and, and uh, the other drugs that actually uh, target uh, uh, the parasite lipid uh, metabolism, for example. 
And I think there, there is a, maybe we should think about that. How can we actually translate from other organisms, other diseases that have similarities to either the biology of, our, of these parasites or how these parasites survive and cope with virulence and there's a, a toxic environment that we translate those uh, towards our field. And one simple example, I mean, Diane very nicely showed this picture that uh, the parasites plug into the metabolism. There are many intracellular pathogens, not only parasites, but for example, mycobacteria is extremely interesting as a source of ideas for uh, anti-leishmanials because it sits in the phagolysosome, it provokes similar kind of pathology, it has glycolipids that are looking extremely similar to LPG uh, on, on Leishmania. And so I think if we learn how mycobacteria subverts and, and, and uses the host cell, maybe we find uh, some pathways that are actually common to Leishmania even, and vice versa. So I think we really should have to broaden uh, our, our vision a little bit, going out of the tri-trips and, and look around in the other organisms. Okay, thank you very much. That's really helpful. I mean, the, the point I think that comes across about this is that scientists become more and more focused and experts in very small fields. And if they don't look outside their fields of expertise, you won't get these syntheses that you're talking about. You really need to have a broad understanding of um, different uh, disease pathologies or the genomes of uh, the diseases or the biochemistry or whatever to be able to fully exploit that. So that's a, a very good point you made there. Thank you.